Hello friends, welcome to another tutorial in Network Analysis and Synthesis. We'll discuss M-derived filters today. We'll talk about the fundamentals of M-derived filters and we'll talk about uh, the reason why they are designed at all in the first place. The prerequisite of this tutorial is a thorough understanding of constant K type filters. Uh, if you have any doubts in designing constant K type filters, I highly recommend that you watch my previous videos where I uh, teach how to design them. Please understand uh, a filter is a device that uh, filters the signal based upon its frequency. So it's a frequency selective device and it allows certain frequencies to pass through them and it blocks other frequencies uh, for example if a low pass filter is supposed to be visualized then it should allow all the frequencies from zero to certain frequency fc which is known as cutoff frequency to pass thus making a pass band from 0 to FC and the rest of the frequencies after FC are blocked so this is known as stop band now ideally this this thing looks pretty simple but uh, in actuality the things are pretty different uh, if we talk about the constant K type filter it had one disadvantage which is written over here that it did not have a sharp cutoff between pass band and stop band so in other words if uh, uh, let us consider this low pass filter again if a constant k low pass filter was there it would behave something like this in reality now it was supposed to cut off all the frequencies after this cutoff frequency FC but even after FC it was allowing some, some of the frequencies to pass through it um, not although not completely but uh, you know some partial signal was being passed through that filter now this this led to uh, the need to modify that filter so that it should have a sharp cutoff frequency uh, or in other words it should immediately stop passing the signals of frequencies greater than FC now if we talk about this particular frequency of interest this is also very interesting point uh, to know that this frequency is known as F infinity the reason being after this frequency uh, infinite attenuation is offered to the signal and the stop band actually starts from this point onwards so this this range of frequencies from FC to F infinity is is a range of ambiguity uh, or in other words this is uh, the range in which the signal is although not passing through completely but it is not uh, being stopped also completely and this am ambiguity leads to the designing of a filter which is known as M derived filter and the other disadvantage of a constant K type filter was uh, in the pass band if we uh, if we go back and um, talk about the uh, attenuation of uh, a constant K type filter its attenuation used to depend upon frequency of operation and the characteristic impedance it used to vary widely in the passband for uh, from the desired value its attenuation used to vary so these were the few points which uh, led to the designing of uh, M derived filters so in other words uh, this is what the M derived filter should be doing for us that it should 
it should pass the frequencies from 0 to FC and nothing beyond FC. So this is ideal and supposed uh, characteristic of an M-derived filter. And how do you how do you design an M-derived filter? As I mentioned earlier, it is uh, supremely important to design a constant K-type filter because for any filter, uh, let us say this is one filter, a simple filter, we would know the uh, characteristic impedance of this filter or we'll know the uh, constant R0 for this filter and we'll also know the cutoff frequency of the uh, the operation should be performed on this frequency it should allow uh, signal up to this frequency to pass through it so having known these two values for constant k type filter we could easily determine the values of l and c so if you know how to find the values of l and c from <coughs> r naught which is the constant and FC which is the cutoff frequency then you should be able to design M derived filters without any difficulty because uh, we know that the T section of a constant K type filter looks like this it is pretty simple and a pi section looks like this uh, so reiterating the fact that the series arm had a total impedance of Z1 the shunt arm had total impedance of Z2 so the impedance in the series arm is distributed as Z1 by 2 and Z1 by 2 so uh, similarly Z1 is featured in the series arm here and Z2 is featured in the shunt arm in the pi section thereby making the two impedances uh, in the shunt arm to be equivalent to 2Z2 in both the arms so uh, if we were to derive M derived filters from these T sections, we need to modify these, these impedances and we need to modify these impedances in such a way so that the characteristic impedance of this filter which is the constant K type filter, its characteristic impedance should be exactly equal to the characteristic impedance of this filter which is our M derived filter. Now please understand although we have changed the values of the impedances in the series arm as well as in the shunt arm and in order to change that you'll notice and I'll tell you the rationale behind it in a short while. You'll notice that I've changed the value of the impedance in the series arm from Z1 by 2 to M into Z1 by 2 and I've changed the value of Z2 to Z2 by M and I've also added one additional impedance uh, which, is, which is dependent upon Z1 as you can see. Uh, it is 1 minus m square upon 4 m into z1 so the impedances are changed however the the characteristic impedance of the entire filter will remain the same as that of the uh, constant k type filter and that is the first key point that you need to take so key point number one is that the characteristic impedance of the constant k-type filter will remain equal to the characteristic impedance of the modified filter which is the M derived filter and the modifications are made in such a way that it does not change this equation and the second key point that I want to mention here is that the value of M is selected in such a way that uh, it remains in a range of 0 to 1. So uh, it remains in a range of 0 to 1 so there would not be 
a drastic change in the values of uh, these impedances they'll be uh, modified uh, within the limit of a factor which will be less than one so slight modifications will be made to the filter that will that will help us in achieving our goal of sharp cutoff between pass band and stop band our main objective is to achieve this and this can be achieved by uh, you know fine tuning these impedances like this and similarly if you look at the pi section the series arm uh, gets additional impedance like this and the shunt arm is um, modified like this the impedance 2z2 is modified as 2z2 upon m and you could note down this by pausing the video this is the final final uh, modification that we need to make in the t section as well as in the pi section for an m derived filter and the key point that i want to mention uh, was that z0 becomes equal to z0 dash and you could you could further write that uh, zot for a constant k type filter is uh, given by z1 square upon 4 plus z1 z2 and we initially make change in the series arm only so my zot becomes equivalent to zot dash which is the impedance for m derived filter becomes equivalent to m square z1 square upon 4 plus m z1 z2 square as i mentioned the initial change is only made with the series arm so the impedance z1 is being prefixed with the uh, m and from there you can equate zot to be equivalent to zot dash and you can get the value of z2 dash to be equivalent to z2 by m plus 1 minus m square upon 4m into z1 and that is the reason we have two components or two impedances in the shunt arm for a t section now that being said you can compare z o pi also z o pi uh, of constant k type remains equivalent to z o pi of uh, m derived filter you could compare and get the values and you'll find that the values come out to be this but that being said the actual question will look something like uh, this it will it will have a problem in hand which we already have uh, seen that if we were to design an m derived low pass filter uh, of course both the section t and pi sections and we've been given the characteristic impedance 500 and the cutoff frequency 1500 now this has been given r naught and fc are given so that we can find l and c we can find the values of l and c from this r naught and c by using the same formulas that we used in constant k type filters so if you remember the values of The value of L could be calculated using R0 upon pi FC and the value of C used to be calculated like this 1 upon pi R0 into FC. So from there you can calculate L and C. So that is why I talked about the importance of designing the constant K type filter in the first place. Once you know the values of L and C then you need to draw this section so from this r naught and fc 
you need to find values of L and draw this section and as we know we we keep this as L by C L by C and we keep this as C uh, I'm sorry we keep this as L by 2 L by 2 and this as C so the total uh, series arm has an impedance of L and the shunt arm has impedance of C all right once you have designed this constant k type filter with l and c then you can easily modify these inductances and this capacitor by multiplying this with m and m here and adding an additional uh, inductor here which should have this value now i'll talk about the third key point here the reason why we modify this filter with with m is based upon the fact that the constant k type filter was supposed to work up till the frequency fc which is 1500 however it started blocking the higher frequencies only after 2000 hertz which is our f infinity so there is a huge gap of uh, you know 500 hertz which is unaccounted for so this is the reason why we need to you know select a a constant m that will help us in modify this filter in such a way so that its characteristic impedance would not change but its response to the frequencies will change and it will start behaving properly and it will start cutting off the uh, frequencies after 1500 so now if we look closely the value of m is calculated by using this super important formula the last thing that we need to do is we need to calculate the value of m which is the modifying factor by this formula and it only depends upon two parameters you can see one is the desired frequency of operation one is the desired cutoff frequency this fc is the desired cutoff frequency where we wanted all our uh, frequencies to cut off and f infinity is that frequency where in actuality the signal started you know getting cut off so from this you can see that if there is a huge difference between fc and f infinity the value of m will be closer to uh, 1 because if this difference is large this uh, this will approach 0 and the value of m will be closer to 1 so you'll need to modify the filter to a greater extent if the value of fc and f infinity are close enough so the modification also the modification needed is also very very small so uh, that is how you can interpret this that is how you need to understand this so m derived filters uh, are designed by fine tuning the components l and c uh, in both t and pi sections uh, by using these formulas or by these modification parameters and the value of m is calculated like this and the reason why m is calculated from fc and f infinity is already uh, clear to you uh, with the discussion and i hope uh, this discussion of m derived filters introduction was of help and you could now solve this numerical you could find the value of m and now you can change this constant k type filter into an m derived filter using this logic and similarly you can find the pi section of this low pass filter and then change it using this logic and uh, please try and solve this uh, numerical and if you find any problem you can uh, put your uh, doubts in the comment section below and let me know if you want more
tutorials on hem derived filters uh, if you need help with more numericals and more case studies and i'll see you in the next video take care bye bye